I do believe I'm going to win when I play. And sometimes it comes true and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but if you don't believe it, I think you have no chance. That hurt. That really hurt. Like today and yesterday, I realized it's only about three or four more sleeps away. So I'm getting a little anxious. So I'm pretty excited. I mean, when they say shuffle up and deal and it's the first hand, you know, million dollar entry tournament, one that I won two years ago, it's like, let's play good, let's run good, let's do it again, because that would be just incredible. No matter what tournament it is, I really have to get some, some form of exercise before I go play. Brandon is, is my number one uh, health guy, guru in my life. But his workouts are really tough. It's constant, it's nonstop, you know, zero to 60 for 60 minutes. So Antonio was all about the muscle head workouts, lifting heavy, really growing muscle. I'm more about sports performance, athleticism, how fast can you move, how in shape you are. And we always are kind of clashing on that. With Brandon, he never listens to me. He, you know, no matter what I say, no matter what I want to do, it's always a cardio themed workout. Five more. Four left. Last three. Let's go. Right there. He always does the work. He might he might run a little bit, you know what I mean, but he always stays with it, sticks with it, and uh, finishes the workout every time. When I go three or four days without uh, some sort of exercise, I'm not quite as present at the table. I find myself not really wanting to be there. Poker takes major discipline and patience and dedication and focus. And I think that if you're in shape, those things get enhanced dramatically. The one drop two years ago, I was so clear on my, on my path to victory. And I just had this clear vision of winning. I've never seen Antonio so focused and in his zone. He had this, this trance about him that day. We actually had a workout, and he said, I'm going to step aside a little bit. And I remember just seeing him sitting to the side. He was just kind of meditating in his vibe and everything. And uh, it was like almost a weird feeling, but you knew he was going to win. And he, he knew he was going to win. He looked you in the eyes absolutely and say, this, this is mine. And, and look what happened. Antonio Esfandiari, the magician, pulls the biggest rabbit ever out of his hat. The barefoot magician with 18 million plus to take home. If you go back and watch the video, you can see the, the moment I won, I kind of entered a weird, euphoric kind of state. I didn't really know what was going on. You could see my face almost go white. It just happened so fast, and to this day, I would do anything to go back and relive that moment. I remember being up there, and I just remember feeling so happy. Um, and so, you know, I think that a lot of people wrote me off in the poker world just because after I had some early success, I spent many years, I really didn't care. I was out partying and living my life. And so, I, you know, everybody kind of just wrote me off. So to come back and win the biggest tournament of all time was kind of just like, you know, and I was up there and I felt like a king. And it was really fantastic to share that experience with all my friends and my family and people that I love. That was really the special thing about it. <laughs> And real quick, real quick, Dad, can you come over here? Because this bracelet is for you. Come here. Come here, Dad. Come on, bro. I put it on like a couple of times a month. Of course, I hide it. If somebody, I know that they asked me to see the bracelet, I show it to them. But most of people, they say, is it a watch or yeah, what time is it? Right. And I say, I don't have a watch. He says, in fact, they did. They say, oh, you have the watch. I said, no, it's not a watch. It's a price. Gangster. Gangster. 
I, it's not I for you. I have to learn their vocabulary. Yeah, but you learn. Like your outfit. How would you describe your outfit? Oh, this is GQ for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the night before we had a reception, he said, Dad, come here, come here. This is the one this, drop reception where, you know, Guy had everyone that was going to yeah. play and the bracelet was on display. Yeah. Okay. And with lots of security and two security was right next to this. And he said, Dad, come here. We went there and said, this is your bracelet. I said, well, you have to win it first. He says, when I win it, that's your bracelet. The day before the one drop, I am going to go into Mount Charleston. There's a... There's an area about an hour and a half away, and then you got to hike up about an hour. It's just beautiful, just totally zen and free of any kind of contact from the world. Just kind of zone out, meditate, and really just kind of take it in and, you know, visualize winning and doing all that good stuff. You know, I know a lot of people, uh, they say it's very silly to, you know, think you're going to win or know you're going to win or, the, you know, all this kind of nonsense. And you know what, there's some truth to it, but if you don't believe you're going to win something, then you have no chance of winning it. So yeah, I do believe I'm going to win when I play. Are you going to get another one this year? Yes, I will. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it as beautiful or more? I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. I, I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Correct. <laughs>